All right. Welcome to everyone joining us. Um, students, if you are able, I see a few friendly faces there. If you're able to turn your cameras on, that would be awesome. Our speakers do enjoy seeing faces on here. Don't care if you just woke up, throw a hat on. Uh, we know you, a lot of you are home today. Um, so I'll introduce myself and go through just a couple pieces of business and then I'm going to turn it over to our moderator, Kelsey King. Um, first thing is, this is our second Build Your Career Forum. Uh, we're super excited to have such a great attendance for this. Um, normally it's in person, um, but this year with COVID, we've constructed it virtually so we can continue on with it. Um, I am the executive officer for the Quad City Builders and Remodelers Association, and part of my job is to work with the area schools on incorporating um, trades into their programs and being able to connect our um, tradespeople out in the community with businesses and working with students in high school and after high school. So I will, at some point during this chat, I'll put up my information, my phone number and email. And if there's anyone that you've um, listened to during these sessions, um, and you, you'd like to connect with them, either for possible job opportunities, um, we have some kids interested in summer jobs or part-time jobs, or if you're getting ready to graduate and this is maybe a field you wanna head into and you wanna talk to them more, it's, it's my job to kind of help get your foot in the door. Um, even with schools, if you need help connecting with someone with one of the schools um, after high school, I can help you with that as well. So I will put my information up on the screen. Um, before Kelsey gets started, um, Lauren Hargrave, with, who is with Davenport Schools, I'm going to um, let her um, chat for just a second. And Mary Johnson with Pleasant Valley Schools are going to talk about how to use the chat in this session. And then we'll get started. Thanks so much. Thanks, Julie. So I know a lot of our Davenport kids may not have used um, the Zoom platform before, so we just wanted to show you um, how to do the chat because that's going to be vital in participating in, um, in this session. So you can see the chat box down there. It'll pop up the chat. You can send a message to everyone or one specific person. If you're asking a question, make sure to send it to the entire group so we can all see it. Uh, so then you can type your info in there and get it sent. Mary, um, Mary put in the chat right now, students put your name, grade, and school in the chat so we can report it to the school. So if everyone wants to test out their chat and do that now, um, you can see it on the bottom of the screen. If you're joining from a mobile device, um, you can definitely see it on there too and you'll get a notification for every chat. So I'm gonna click out of this and go back to the presentation. So make sure um, as you have questions through uh, this time, put those in the chat for our moderator. Thanks guys. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started then. Um, I'm Kelsey King and I serve as the admissions coordinator for Scott Community College. I'm excited to be here with all of you today. I have the pleasure of introducing Scott Pearson and Lisa Klein. Um, Scott is with Pearson Building Pursuits. Scott started working for other builders in the Quad Cities before his own drafting, design, and custom home building business in 1997. Scott has designed and built over 400 homes in the past 30 years. Scott studied industrial education and technology at Iowa State University. And Lisa works for Klein Designs, Pearson Building Pursuits. She's a graduate of Scott Community College Interior Design Program working with Pearson Building Pursuits for the past six years. Lisa enjoys working with clients to make selections, designing their dream home from scratch, or remodeling their current home, bringing it back to life. So thank you both um, to Scott and Lisa for joining us. I will turn it over to you both to talk a little bit more about what you do. All right, thank you very much. Um, again, my name is Scott Pearson. I've uh, been working in the construction field for kind of all my life. Um, my grandparents owned a farm. We did uh, our own maintenance and things and, and re-roofing and, and uh, building uh, repairs. Um, kind of grew up with it through junior high and high school uh, with friends, neighbors, and, and parents again. Um, so in, in um, Grade school, if you guys remember when you were kids, um, my start 
probably was way back in, in grade school when you start making forts with blankets and, and furniture and all those sorts of things. So it wasn't the, the best structural structure in the world, but it was a start to, to build forts, uh, junior high, uh, around our uh, home that we used to live in, uh, uh, was in an area kind of new construction. And I borrowed a lot of uh, construction material to, again, build these forts. And holding a hammer and or cutting um, material was, has always been in my, in my blood. Um, junior high uh, was a lot of shop classes. Uh, I took as many drafting classes as I could. I was, my, I was the only uh, student in my drafting class my senior year. Uh, they pretty much let me do as much drafting and anything I'd like to do. Um, drawing nuts and bolts wasn't that much that much fun, so I started drawing more and more homes. And that's where my passion really um, for drafting and architecture uh, started was, was then. Um, from then, uh, we, or I did a lot of uh, uh, continued work at Iowa State uh, through building Visha floats uh, for our fraternity and then um, worked down at the Ar Rock Island Arsenal for uh, about 10 years uh, in the engineering uh, department down there. But um, that didn't fulfill me. I really wanted to get out and be able to draw and see a structure go up from ground level to, to finish product. And we do that within four to six, eight months, depending on the size of the home. And it just, it was a fulfillment of being able to complete a job and see what you've created. Um, that's kind of my background. That's how I started into it uh, back in 88 with doing drafting with another general contractor here in town and went from drafting to uh, project manager to estimating to owning my own business. So Lisa. Um, let's see. Well, when I started going to college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I was originally going to be an accountant and I hated it. And then I took a job doing accounting work for 11 years and that was for a remodeling company. And while I was working there, I decided I wanted to be on the other end of things, not behind a computer all day. So that's when I went back to school and got my interior design degree. And that's what I've been doing ever since. At Scott Community College. Do we want to go into the different um, draft plans? Do you want to walk us through those, Scott, if I pull those up? Sure. Uh, the plan that you're about to see is a home that we currently have the foundation uh, in the ground, and actually the framers uh, just started that today. Um, it is a three bedroom home. It is a similar plan that we've built before and being a draftsman, uh, not an architect, I am a draftsman. Uh, architect goes to school for four years and then goes through another two years. So it's about a six year program for an architect to go through Iowa State to become a certified licensed uh, architect. But this home plan is a home that I've drafted up and um, it's basically a, a, a home that uh, it's not wide open like you've seen or heard about having open floor plans, but what we're hearing from clients and other homes that wide open is still popular, but they want some separation so the noise and, and entertaining that there are gonna be two or three different groups in an area um, those are just some of the things we're hearing and reading in some of our trade magazines. So this lot was too narrow that we put a garage that was tandem deep on the, on the right side. So it's still a three car garage, but we drew it to fit the lot. All right. And the next plan is a, another smaller home. Uh, 1,600 square feet that we just uh, finished up and sold. And uh, this one, again, is a, just a two-bedroom home, but it has that, that open floor plan that folks are looking for and, and uh, uh, large great room entertainment center where the TV is just to the left of the stairs. 
And then there's a tech room right up front, just off the uh, front door. Again, since everybody's had this COVID, everybody's home, the word on the street is, is that folks want a pocket office. So that's what we kind of incorporated in that plan. Scott, I have a question for you. So I see in sure. this is your, you know, this is a hand drawn um, sketch or drawing. Then do yeah. you take that and then do it into computer generated? How do you, how does that work? Well, this one is, I do, um, I do have soft plan. Uh, Lisa is chief Ar architect. Uh, she actually takes some, most of our plans and does the pipe uh, drawing like you saw in the first plan. Uh, Lisa generates that off of the computer. Um, I'm old school. I, I'm still on the board. I can do custom homes a little bit faster on my drafting board than, uh, say, a computer program. Um, the computer programs are, are wonderful out there. Um, they have a lot of downloads and, and parts and pieces to it that makes the drafting a little bit easier. But you still have to, when you push that magical button to get your front elevation, you still have to fix it. There's still tweaks and things that you have to do. And then if you make changes, you stretch it out or you do something to it, you've got to go back and fix all that. So my drawings on the board, they're out of paper on vellum. Um, I just get out my trusty eraser and fix it and make my changes. Awesome. Thank you. That's showing a, a number of our Lisa uh, will let you know what we do. Once we have the plan and uh, we draw the plan for the lot, we always make sure that we visit the lot and see whether the direction of the sun's coming up and, and going down so we don't have uh, the screen porch or the deck on the west side that you get cooked. If you got the option to be able to turn the house just a little bit to get the better uh, uh, shaded areas or if there's a view or whatever, but then Lisa, um, I give the plan to Lisa and we just discuss um, a lot of the details that go from siting to interior finishes and that's what Lisa helps us out with. Yeah, I put those sheets together just so everybody knows what's going where and honestly I forget what I pick for different houses so putting pictures in there and notes really helps me remind what we picked for each job and then we <coughs> put it on Dropbox, which we all have access to on our phones, so you can pull it up at any job site. And I usually send those, if it's a pre-sold house, I'll send those to the clients as well so that they know what they picked and remember if they have any questions, they can always reference all these selection sheets. So that's kind of like an updated storyboard really is what you're... Yeah, yep. and we'll post, we'll post them at the job sites too, just so anyone working there knows, you know, what's supposed to go in in case something shows up wrong, wrong color, or wrong finish, whatever. So everyone's on the same page. Right, this is a total process. This is a, uh, obviously a client or a, a spec home, uh, which will be build, build for sale. Uh, but we start out with a the lot, then we go to the plan, and then we start filling the interior and we select uh, siding colors, the roof shingles, but that's what these boards do. These are the old fashioned, well not old fashioned, but they're the uh, information boards now that we use. Um, and like Lisa said, we do, once we go through the drywall stage, these are all posted in each room for whatever finish they're going to have. So Scott and Lisa, Scott, how long does it take for you to draft up a house? And Lisa, how long does it take for you to kind of decide which fixtures and those kinds of things you're going to use? Drafting and, and estimating takes about uh, two months. Um, drafting for me, a, a home like that, um, if I have a client that we're doing a specific custom home, it may take a little bit longer than two, three weeks. Uh, but I can draw home uh, start to finish in about 14 to 20 hours. Now, Scott, you mentioned a lot of times through this that you so far a lot about drafting. Now, how does drafting differ from architect? Because I know I have a lot of students that are on or that are going to be watching the recording that say they want to be architect 
and those are sometimes two different jobs or can be two different paths. Can you talk a little bit about that? You bet. Um, drafting is it's still an architect anymore. There, there's, there's residential architects and the commercial architects. Um, there's a number of my friends back from Iowa State that are working with large architect firms, uh, one in Kansas City at the moment that uh, does uh, um, the, the mark, the, the design and get engineers involved to help them put together the heating and air conditioning, the electrical, the plumbing, and they send it out to all the engineers within that architect firm possibly and the architect puts all those notes and all that information together into dozens and dozens or hundreds of pages of specifications and, and, and sheets of, of plans. Uh, so every trade will know how to build that particular building. Um, architects also do residential drafting. Um, they do it the same way I do as far as, as having a client and drawing up what that uh, client may needs are and uh, draft up a home. Um, drafting for me uh, is a passion of mine to be able to draw and get these ideas out of, our, out of my head. And drafting is not licensed. It is not certified. Uh, there are some cities that require me to take my plans to a structural engineer and or an architect, not an architect, a structural engineer to get it stamped so the city or county or area would approve the construction of that home to make sure that the joist, the floor joist, which is your floor and, and, and the, that component, your beams, your support posts, uh, your pier pad, concrete pier pads and everything, are to the adequate size. An architect already has that information and will either go to his engineers and have them do that, and then they put those uh, specifications on the plans. Does that answer questions? Um, Scott, I have a question on that just a little bit further for the students. So for, because um, sure. you're at UN Iowa State, so for drafting versus architecture, is there a difference in the length of schooling or classes? Yeah, the architect you go to go through, um, you try to go through as much science and math as you can through high school. Um, and then if you can do as much drafting as you can. And then uh, that's a four-year degree at Iowa State. And then there's another two years of kind of an apprenticeship, um, kind of like a doctor. It's not so much going through a PhD or, or, or a uh, uh, grad studies, but it's an additional two years. And that's when you get certified as an architect. And then what about Great. for a drafter? Would that be less time then, I'm assuming? Drafting is, is a, um, you kind of pick it up as you go. Um, there's a lot of, of background training. Um, someone that is real good in, in construction or on a framing crew, um, somebody that could, um, Lisa's drawn homes. Um, what do you, what do you, what do you, a, a draftsman? It's like you could still be a doctor, draftsman. Doctor versus a physician assistant. You could still be a draftsman uh, going through uh, school or Scott community, or even uh, if you had your computer and able to put these, uh, the, the lumber and the, the trusses and, and things together. It's a, it's hard to, do you have a, something? Um, it's like a doctor versus a physician assistant. Yeah, I guess it's like a doctor versus a physician's assistant. So you still know how to do it, but you don't have the degree. 
So with that being said, for someone that's interested in drafting and not doing architecture, um, what would, Scott, and you have to remind me again, what classes did you take? Because you don't have a, it's not a degree in drafting. It's all the things that you took that helped develop your drafting skill. Is that kind of what you're saying? So you could take other Absolutely. classes and knowing math and all of that help develop your drafting skill. Is that kind of what I'm, what I'm hearing? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I believe Sky Community College, yeah, I believe Sky Community College does have a class in that. Um, it's kind of a overall, uh, yes, my education has helped. I've gone through oh, three years of uh, engineering and my the most fun was structural engineering where you've got loads and bearings and, and that sort of thing. So. Um, what, what forces do, uh, loads do, like snow on top of a roof or a wind coming through like we had this summer. Um, knock on wood, none of our homes had any structural damage, but we do do some things differently to, to really um, secure the, the walls and uh, interior walls and floors and, and, and all that. We do have a um, question here in the chat from Mason. Uh, Mason asks, where would you say most of the work is done? On the job site or at home or office? Where do you draw the homes? A good plan is going to reduce the number of errors and problems in the field. So when my plans are drawn for our subcontractors or our trades, it being the uh, from ordering windows to make sure that they're, they're the right nomenclature, the right size is on the window uh, opening, um, to cabinet layout with the, with the kitchen cabinets and countertops, to electrical, plumbing, and, and heating and air conditioning. Um, when I draw, I think of all those parts and pieces because it helps the flow of the home. It may be economic to be able to draft and draw it that, that way, or it could be, um, you know, what the client would prefer. But um, yeah, um, a lot of work is done prior to putting the house in the ground and starting it. And it does save on, like I said, issues. But um, the whole process, like I said, it's probably four to six months for a normal size 2,000 square foot home. So um, this into a home, how do you decide kind of what style or what fixtures you're going to pick out? How long does that take you to determine that? It probably takes, if I'm doing a spec house, it probably takes me maybe a week to decide everything that's going into it. I think it's more, I spend more time, you know, putting it all into the computer and laying it out for everybody than I actually do picking the stuff. But I usually start with the exterior and then I'll start with kitchen cabinets and then I go to flooring and then to plumbing fixtures and then light fixtures and paint. So that's kind of the order I go in. What's a typical work day or work week like? How many hours are you spending and what takes up the majority of your time? For myself, I try to get to the job sites. We've got a half a dozen jobs going on between remodeling and new construction. And I try to meet up and, and go one direction. I go east one day and go west the next day maybe. Um, but I do a lot of uh, uh, bookkeeping, estimating, um, a little bit of drafting in between uh, those things when I'm at home. My drafting board is in uh, our basement office. Um, we do have another office facility where Lisa and our office manager um, um, spent some time there working on selections and, of course, everyday duties. Um, it's pretty easy to get 40, 50, 60 hours in a week 
doing the different uh, jobs. I probably work about 30 or 40 to hour, hours a week. And I mean, it's different every day. Some days I'm doing computer work all day. Some days I'm meeting clients all day. Um, and some days, you know, I split it up. I'll try to do either my meetings in the morning or the afternoon. So I have some good solid time to get computer work in without being interrupted or having to leave and go somewhere. So I try to plan my day around at least having a few good hours to get computer work done. I saw there was a question about uh, how do you determine or want to be a draftsman. I started out in grade school and junior high doing a lot of hand, uh, uh, freehand sketching, um, pastels, if you will, um, all through junior high and quite a bit in high school, too. I worked on a lot of uh, uh, sets for homecoming, for the uh, musicals that we put on, productions. Um, and then also prom, I always helped whatever grade was going on, but I helped with the decorating and designs of different sets and, and vignettes and, and backgrounds um, all the way through junior high and high school. College, a little bit more with uh, the Visha float parades up at Iowa State. Um, I built five different uh, floats with, with our group and uh, Puff the Magic Dragon uh, was the kind of the coolest one. Um, I was as I was working at the arsenal in an a engineering co-op that spring. I asked some of the guys that uh, knew fluids and knew how to set the the hydraulic rams to a certain location so that I could get this uh, puff the magic dragon. He was huge. He was about thirty feet long, so he could sit up and then his head would move left and right. And then we had a fire extinguisher that would blow out uh, uh, the smoke or the the uh, extinguisher for his, his uh, fire. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of different things and aspects of, of pulling a house together in parts and pieces and, and learning through your experiences. And Lisa, can you talk a little bit more about the steps that you have going into it? And um, Scott had mentioned, you know, we've talked about draftsmen and um, the architect and then also residential versus commercial. How does that, uh, fit in with the interior designing? Is that similar or set up? Um, well, we, we collaborate on the plans and then pretty much once the plan is at the construction phase, then that's where I take it from normally and then start making selections, you know, whether it's a spec house and I'm selecting everything on my own. Otherwise, if it's a pre-sold, then I'll be meeting with clients and um, taking them around to do selections and helping them decide and you know, letting them know what goes well with the colors and everything that they have going on so the house flows well. And is it just that the colors along. that you're um, choosing or are there other aspects that you have to, what impact do you have on that house? Is it the outside to the inside, uh, the whole bit or what is it? Yep, yep, it's that siding color, the stone that's going on the outside of the house, front doors, um, and then we'll do, I help select kitchen cabinets, countertops, um, like plumbing fixtures, sinks, faucets, all that, um, flooring, tile showers, um, light fixtures, paint colors, I mean. The paint colors that, that Lisa worked with when we do a, a custom home for a client, um, she collaborates with those with those folks and asks them what their color of their furniture might be or their uh, not so much pillows but we try to get with them and, and help them reuse as much uh, furniture or, or color schemes and different things that, that they already have existing into their new home obviously we're freshening things up a little bit and they might change some things and go with some uh, uh, accent walls, but uh, Lisa coordinates that whole thing with them. I think you're muted, Mary. We can't hear you. Um, so I think that you have final pictures that you want to share. Lauren has stopped sharing her screen, so if you want to go ahead and share your screen to show those final pictures, that'd be great. 
Yeah, we um, are sitting right now in a, in a house that, a little bit of background, it's a 4,200 square foot uh, story and a half, which means that the master bedroom is on main floor, and then there's three bedrooms up with a finished basement. Um, we got this house uh, about a year ago, and we remodeled it uh, from top to bottom. It was a home that had some water damage from that uh, uh, 50 below back a year, a little about a year and a half ago, but anyway. Um, it took out the whole master suite and the whole basement. Everything was, was wet, uh, completely dried out, and there were some things in here that just didn't seem right. Uh, we did find a copy of the original plans, and with my background, again, with engineering and things, we've changed some things around. Uh, we took out a fireplace that was um, actually, um, 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 what do you call it? See-through. No, it was a defective uh, fireplace uh, that we found out that, and it was also leaking in the roof, so we just removed the whole thing. Uh, we did add a second set of staircase that we'll show you. Um, we cut a hole in the floor and made a new straight shot and access to the basement. So Lisa did all the selections in here and coordinated everything and, and it turned out wonderfully. At 20 years old, so we took out a lot of the oak and replaced it with new cabinets. Uh, everything has been updated. So we can show you around if you'd like. That would be great. Oh, go ahead, that would be okay. great. Just pick it up by hand. So while they're getting that hooked up, okay, Lisa that joined late. If you want to go ahead and sign in with your name, grade, and school, that would be terrific. Lisa's going to show you around here. This is the, the new foyer. Um, I've got before and after pictures. This is what it looked like before when you came in. So we did redid all the wood floors. We redid all the spindles going up the stairs. Paint. So that's what it looked like. And then this is what we have. So we redid the box newels uh, from the oak. Uh, railings and we had white spindles and we changed those all to wrought iron. Okay. And then the second staircase we added, we made, we matched the spindles so they both, because you can see them both when you walk in the front door. So we added the rear staircase. The staircase going down to the basement that they had before is a U-shape and it's very tight so it's hard to get furniture down there. So that was the point of us putting in this second wide open staircase is to get things down and up easier. Yeah, the staircases actually went down right there. And it was very tight. We couldn't even get drywall down the steps. Okay, Lisa, you want to show them the great room? Yep. Swing around so to the, the kitchen. Here. We put new flooring in here, um, updated the stone around the fireplace, and we added storage here so you can mount your TV up here, and you can put all your DVD players or whatever in there, and you can just shut it to hide them so you don't have to look at them every day. And this is what it looked like before. Pretty dated looking. So that goes down to the to lower level. Okay. And with all these windows right here, it really left a lot of light down into the basement on this side now that it's all open. This is the kitchen, dinette area. Again, all new flooring, all 
all new cabinetry. This is where that second fireplace used to be that we tore out. And I believe we have pictures of that. I've got it over here. Oh, yeah. I'll show it to you. Oops, right there. So that's what the, was a, back 20 years ago, we, we built them and designed homes to have hearth rooms. So the sunroom that we have over here to the left is actually now our sunroom, which used to be the dinette, and then where we're standing here with the fireplace was the hearth room. But we don't quite live like that anymore, so we took that fireplace out and made a TV, spot for a TV so you could see it from the, the raised countertop. And then where the stool is at is another area for a, a possible beverage refrigerator, or it could be a desk area for anyone. Yep, very universal. Okay, kitchen. Kitchen, all new cabinets. Um, they're like an off-white with a glaze, so you get the dark in the corners there. We kind of tried to color the hardware in with the glaze on there, so you have some dark. So you get good contrast with the dark on the light. Um, we did all new quartz countertops and new backsplash. Um, we added this island here. There was never an island in the kitchen before, so we added a little prep island here. So you have more counter space here in the middle. And our enormous commercial size fridge and freezer because this is a big house and we figured whoever lives here is gonna have a large family and need lots of storage. I'll show you a couple before pictures and then we can swing down to the master suite. It was very dated looking before and the cabinets were- For a house of this size, the kitchen itself was very tight. Um, what there weren't enough countertop space uh, in this kitchen. Uh, when I am doing my drafting, I try to maximize my countertop space for working space and for a home with, with four bedrooms and a possible fifth in the basement. Then we try to, again, make sure that there's adequate enough uh, countertop space for everybody to, to work. The laundry room back here used to be right there where the bench is at. It was very, very small. We actually took some room out of that sunroom and pushed that wall back where the plumbing is, is right now, back three feet to make a laundry room. We just thought it was most important to be able to get a laundry room versus a kind of a walk through laundry area in, a, in the, from the garage. Being such a big house now, we have storage for shoes and coats and back. Okay, we can go this way. So this is where the, the accidents or the water pipes burst were right up there by the ceiling fan and it took out everything in this wing or end of the house. Um, all the way down to the basement. All the way down to the basement, also went all the way out into the yard and, and all the way to the street. It was that extensive of, of amount of water. So we redid the whole bathroom. This is before. It was very ugly and dated. Looks like it may have froze unless it's just me. And the shower was teeny tiny. So we ripped that, put in some fun retro tile. Hey, Amy.
Are we back on? Yes. Yeah. Better now? Yes. Okay. So for the vanity, the vanities were the old short ones. So we, we saved the vanity and raised it up. And then we put a new quartz countertop on, two new undermount sinks, and two new single handle faucets. And then, and then we changed the floor to a, what did you call it? It's a retro style pattern, but it's very neutral colors. It's got some dark navy blue, some gray, and some white in it. But just, and then we took out the old jacuzzi tub and put in this freestanding tub here. And then we have a much larger tile shower to the right here than what used to be here. For that we did a we did a fiberglass base and then we tiled the walls in a four by sixteen subway tile. And then use some of the tiles that are on the floor <coughs> for an accent. And we have a nice little shelf in there on the back wall to set all your shampoos and stuff on. And there's also a bench with a handheld, so you could use either the regular shower head. Too much glare. Or the handheld, or both of them at the same time. And those handhelds also make it really nice to clean the shower too. We put a frosted glass for a toilet, but it's adequate. But the glass door just lets a lot more light in through. So anybody's not claustrophobic, but it is kind of a nice thing to be able to have. And then the master closet, which is as big as some of the bedrooms at my house. It's pretty sweet. Got all new closet shelving in here and plenty of room for a couple of people to store all their stuff in here. And some shoe cubbies under the window or purse holders. Now should we go downstairs? Yeah. yeah, we can show you downstairs real quick if you'd like. We'll take you down the, the skinny U-shaped staircase first. This is the problem area. On the original plan, this is <clears throat> the way it was. We tried to open it up some more, but there are too many load-bearing walls around it that we couldn't do that. So there's the back staircase. If you can see it here in the back. That's where they land, but. This is what the old basement used to look like. So that's the wall right behind me, um, which is now where we have a bar area. And we were actually able to keep all the cabinets and appliances that used to be in the kitchen upstairs. We, when we tore them out, we just saved them and reused them down here. And the appliances. And the appliances. So we've got a, basically a second kitchen down here. And then we were able to <clears throat> laminate a two inch piece or three pieces actually to make this great big bar top. That is wood yeah. and we distressed it and put it there to kind of stain and match the, uh, the floor if you will. We took the darkest part out of this. This is a vinyl plank on the floor here in the bar area and we took the darkest part out of it and stained this to match. Okay. We'll go upstairs. Take you back. The new straight shot staircase.
And where we've been sitting is the formal dining area. So there's two separate dining spaces in this house. Well, thank you for showing us around. That's a lot of uh, impressive work you've done to, to fix it up after the wind and water damage there. Um, we do have some questions that have come in to the chat, so I wanna make sure um, that we get to those. Um, let me get my chat open here. Okay, so um, the question we have is, when you are an architect, are you responsible for everything for the house, including the pipes, heating and cooling, et cetera? As a certified architect, yes. Um, that's why the architecture firms will go out and, and get bids and estimates from their trades. And depending on um, the architecture, architect firm will then verify that all that work has been completed and completed properly. Or each one of the trades versus, whether it's uh, heating and air conditioning, uh, electrical and plumbing, flooring, but all of that will be approved by the architect on the job setting. And another question, will the reuse the like cabinets and the appliances from the kitchen that you moved to the basement how often are you able to kind of recycle or repurpose those kinds of items i guess not very often i mean they were in decent shape that we just we wanted something new and fresh in there and that was the reason we and we knew we were going to add a bar in the basement anyway so we figured we may as well just reuse those cabinets down there because they're a good they're a good neutral color, they're white, so it's not like they were crazy old oak that, you know, nobody uses anymore. A lot of the cabinets we'll take to, um, when we're doing remodeling, uh, we'll take to the restore. Um, some people keep them and they use them for storage in the back room and or in their garage. Yep. Another question we have is what's kind of the salary range for interior designer as well as architects and draftsmen? Um, probably around 40 to 50 a year. Obviously, if you were in Chicago or New York, it would be a lot more, but in the quiet cities. Um, another question we have here is um, about the cost. So what are some of um, factors where like budgets come into place? Um, how does that impact your designing or the kind of design or kind of appliances and fixtures and those kinds of things? So how does budget go into these kinds of projects? We always have to look at the budget for everything. Um, Basically, Scott, when he prices out a job, he has allowance numbers in there for separate ones for flooring, um, cabinets, light fixtures. So when we go out and pick stuff and get a price for that, we have to go back to the budget number and make sure it's in line. And if not, then we have to make changes to bring the price down so it's in budget. When the plan is, is completed, um, we send it out to the trades, to the suppliers, and get an estimate from them. Um, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, but we've tried to target a and budget the home so that we don't get too upside down on doing some very, very expensive cabinets maybe into a moderate uh, priced home. Um, you, you try to match the, the finishes and the interior work with the size of the home so you don't get yourself in trouble and kind of blow it out of the water, if you will. Um, you know, granite, marble floors and all those sorts of, it would be terrific, but they're very expensive. Terrazzle uh, flooring um, is very expensive. You can get some gorgeous 24 by 24s, but that would blow up our, our, our flooring allowance to triple the cost. So there are things that you've got to kind of balance out. Um, if somebody does prefer uh, nicer countertops or better floorings, um, we try to, again, balance it out so that uh, we don't break the bank. 
So how do you handle or work with your customers that maybe do want something a little more expensive that's not in the budget? Well, that's why a lot of these items, and, and Lisa and I, we, we work real close to keep what she was talking about an allowance item. That's basically our budget or our original estimate. So we try to stay and stick with that um, allowance, if you will. That is kind of a starting point for our clients or for Lisa to make selections. Um, it's just a starting point, but it's a suggested starting point. You can go over it or you can go under it. Yeah, and I've definitely had clients who wanted, you know, more higher end countertops than what they had budget numbers for. And so, you know, they'll just end up paying the difference. You know, we let them know what the cost difference is, and then they decide if they want to pay that or not. It's all, it's all approved by the client. Um, another question we have is what's the job demand or career demand? Are there a lot of positions available for architects or draftsmen and interior designers or what are some other companies or places you can take those careers? Okay. For um, I know a lot of interior designers, you know, work at places like flooring places, um, light fixture places, um, kitchen and bath places, furniture places, um, things along those lines. That's where I know other designers work at. Or some people, you know, have their own have their own um, site, their own business, you know, and um, help people decorate their houses and stuff like that on their own. As far as drafting, um, yes, um, there are a number of draftsmen in the area, um, four or five of them that are real good. And the ones I've spoken to are pretty busy at the moment. And um, I'm guessing that if there are some, a few more draftsmen, um, you know, whether it be at lumber yards or uh, individuals that are uh, drawing on the side, um, but yeah, I mean, it'd be, there, there's jobs out there available. We have another um, question that came in through the chat, which is, as a freshman in high school, is there a place where I could work um, for to get more information about interior designing? Um, as far as schooling or... Um, I believe yeah, maybe where they like a, where I could work at to get more information about interior designing. So Xavier, if you want to clarify your question yeah, for yourself, I would probably suggest a furniture place. And I'm going to chime in on this. This is Mrs. Furniture Johnson. Furniture flooring. I'm going to go ahead and chime in on this. I'm Mrs. Johnson. I'm the career coordinator here at the high school. As a freshman, there isn't any career that you, sure. any job that you could do to work on. You could do some volunteering opportunities, maybe like Habitat Restore, um, some other places like that. As a sophomore, you would be able to work maybe at like a furniture place. You do have to be 16 in order to work at a lot of those places. So the flooring companies that Lisa mentioned, the, um, the design, I mean, the um, places like LBW vetting and um, Lane Bryant, what is it? Uh, the furniture companies, some of those that are retail sales, you could do those starting when you're 16. Um, they prefer 17 and 18 just because you can work more hours. Thank you, those were some great questions that came in. It's just a reminder, if there are any other students with questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, we do have just a few minutes left. Um, so um, Scott or Lisa, are there any last things you may want to, um, or words you want to leave with these students interested in these career areas? Do we lose them? Scott, Lisa? 
think you're muted there. We can't hear you. There, there you go. go. I think we're back on. Yes. It just, okay, good. I had just asked um, in the last few minutes here, was there anything else, a few last words you wanted to share with any students interested in this career area? Well, a draftsman, uh, I'm a draftsman, but I'm also a general contractor and remodeler. So drafting is a whole separate part of my entity or my, my background. So my title is a general contractor, but I do my own drafting, okay? But I do draft for other general contractors and other builders and even other, other uh, individuals if they need something drawn up, uh, whether it be a sunroom or a deck or a garage or in whatever project that they might have. So, um, yeah, there's, there's the drafting portion of what I do, but then I also do the general contracting or uh, put the other hat on of, of remodeling. So then I can put another hat on being designing, and then that's when Lisa comes in and we collaborate on all that. And Lisa, any last words you want to share for students interested in interior design? Um, I would say it's a really fun job. I, I love that I don't do the exact same thing every single day, you know, like sitting behind a computer all day, every day. It's always, every day is different. And that's what I love about my job. The products and things too, um, that are coming out are, are, are very unique. Um, right now we're still in that, that open concept, uh, open living concept, uh, but it's still about textures, whether it's shake shingles on, vinyl shake shingles on the outside of the house or uh, her pretty backsplash that she put in, in here that's got the diamonds uh, with a color coordinated um, uh, grout. But you don't wanna go with uh, too busy of a countertop and too busy of a backsplash, then they kind of So those are things that, that keep transition and um, a lot of things are really unique. The best thing I'd say for, for young folks, um, try to get online and get some of the um, uh, trade magazines maybe and read you know, flipping through pages of, uh, and pictures or online. Um, we got a lot of inspirations, uh, library set up of, of light fiction. Uh, Jolene over there has just books and books of, of really cool, neat, now LED lighting. Um, everybody's just got different things coming out all the time. It's, it, whether there's plumbing, flooring, um, what else? Yeah, cabinets, countertops. Yeah, um, and we try to stay up on all that uh, through our trade magazines and or through our, our suppliers. And we never, we try to never do the same thing twice. At least I do. I, I Unless just, it works and it pays well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I'm doing spec houses, I do them all different every time. I don't like to just stay in a rut of doing everything the exact same. But well, we try to work on trends, whether it's national. Um, as you guys may have seen, uh, going to the East Coast versus the West Coast versus down South or going up North, the trends change. Um, we're not so much the trendsetter, but we're not on the end of that game either. Um, it, it's It's with computers and, and pictures and Pinterest and all those things, our clients are, are very educated now and we're getting a lot of great feedback and ideas that we just incorporate into their into the remodel of their home, which is a lot of fun. Great, well, thank you both so much. Um, the students, what you're seeing up on the screen is just some links to some additional websites and information that um, was discussed in today's presentation. So please feel free to take a screenshot or picture of um, those links there. And thank you so much to Scott and Lisa for joining us today to talk more about your careers. It was a lot of great information that you shared. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy days to, to join us. Absolutely, our pleasure. No problem. Thank you.